Hi everybody, welcome back to Just Make It. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up your printer and camera to take silky smooth time lapses of your 3D prints. Time lapses are an amazing way to showcase your 3D prints, so if it's something you've been thinking of doing, hopefully this video might be of some help. I managed to get some really cool time lapse footage, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can see how it all turned out. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using my Prusa Mark IV, my Lumix S5, a limit switch, four pole camera shutter, and some resistors. I'll also be sharing the adjustments you need to make to the G-code side of things to make this time-lapse setup work. And with all that being said, let's get into it. Let's start with the basics of how time-lapses actually work. After each layer is printed, the extruder of the 3D printer is programmed to move all the way to the left side where a limit switch is mounted, which in turn is connected to our camera via a remote shutter. So a photo is taken after each layer, and then we take those photos into an editing software and compile them, and this gives us our time-lapse footage. By adding some extra G-code, we're able to tell the printer to trigger the limit switch, therefore giving us our time-lapse. I'll be using this guide from the guys over at Prusa to make this all work, so feel free to check that out if you want some more information. And with the theory out of the way, let's get into making. The first step was to make a mount that we can fit the limit switch into and then attach that to our printer. I took some basic measurements using my calipers of the limit switch and then I jumped into Fusion to make a simple mount for the limit switch to sit into. The mount is going to attach to the left motor on the Prusa which already has a bolt that we can make use of and then the limit switch is going to fit in using just simple friction. Once I was happy with the design, it was time to get this printed and tested. So the switch fits in nicely and it's securely held in place. The next step was to get this mounted onto the printer. For this I'm using an M3 bolt that's already in position, so it's just a case of removing the bolt, fitting the mount and then bolting through it again. Once we attach this onto the printer and the extruder moves over to the left side, it's able to trigger the switch. Now that the mount's ready, let's move on to getting the remote shutter cable ready as well. For this I'm going to be using the circuit diagram that's been given in the blog post I've linked down below. This four pole shutter cable has four cables inside the main jacket and we're interested in the red and the grey cables. Using some resistors I had in an Arduino kit, I followed the diagram and got everything soldered up accordingly. So you can see here guys we've got this working exactly as intended, whenever I press the limit switch and the remote shutter is connected to the camera, the shutter gets triggered and a picture is taken. So we've got the hardware side of this all set now, now we can move on to the G-code element of this project. I'm using the G-code Prusa supplied in that blog post, however I'm making a couple of changes because my setup works a little bit differently. Once the G-code was ready, it was a case of going into Prusa Slicer printers and on the left side you see custom g-code. When you scroll down you see a section that's called after layer change g-code and that's where you want to paste it. So now that we've got all the parts ready and waiting to go, we're going to load up a Benchy and Slicer, get that printed using our new time lapse setup and see how it goes. Once the print was done, I took it off the build plate and had a really good look at it to make sure I was happy with the quality. As much as we're after smooth, nice looking time lapses, we want to make sure that any of the G-code modifications we do don't alter the print or cause any issues. And here is the finished time lapse. 
I'm really happy with how this came out. The print looks almost like it's growing out of the build plate and that's exactly the look I was going for. After looking at this though, there were a few things that I wanted to tweak. So, I made some adjustments and went for another print. And that's going to do it for this video guys. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe and leave some comments down below. Be sure to check out some of my other videos and I'll catch you all next time.